So I have some Poirot on. A very full cup of tea. You can see I need to take the first sip. And I am working on some cross stitch this afternoon. I am really enjoying it. Like I said, it's a present that I'll be giving in August. And so I've only just started. It's going to be a giant wreath. Um, so this is only the very beginnings of it, but working on my third color already. So just working my way down with it. And I look forward to showing you my continual progress. You should put yours on your head too. A little treat for the boys and I wanted to show you all what I got ah, Okay. so these are called bubble bears and what's really cool about them is I personally get very bored with blowing bubbles and I don't like having like sticky hands um, and so these you can squeeze and it pops the bubble wand up so it's not like the kid has to dip the bubble wand down and then it makes it like they can just do the bubbles all on their own. Here's the bubble bear. I took the cap off and if you squeeze it, the wand pops up. And then it just sinks right back down. And then you put the lid back on. I'm so excited about this. But it's not too full that the bubbles are all spilling out. This is amazing. I don't know why I didn't find out about this sooner. It is Tuesday around 3.30 p.m. And today is my cooking around the world day. Excuse this like very wrinkly t-shirt, but it is what it is. And I am doing, I got to the G, this is the G week, and we are doing Germany. So, of course, I asked Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures uh, for some suggestions. And she sent me some really nice recipes out of a German cookbook she has. And I'm going to be making a goulash and some potato dumplings with a cream sauce. I've never had potato dumplings. I grew up in the south so we had things like chicken and dumplings but never potato dumplings uh, so i'm really excited especially with a cream sauce which just sounds so german and obviously i want it to be very authentic and mel did say goulash um while it did originate in hungary it is definitely a german staple now and so she thinks it definitely counts as a german dish and i'm going to be listening to north and south while i am cooking and I have gotten to, for those of you that have read North and South, I have gotten to the chapter, um, A Blow and Its Consequences. So for those of you that have read it, this is the chapter in North and South, and I cannot wait. Um, so yes, going to be cooking and listening to North and South. It should be great. <laughs> I am better now, said she in a very low, faint voice. I was a little sick. She let him take her hand and feel her pulse. The bright colour.
was supposed to be joining us. He'll not be long. He's on the pond of his new stallion. Best the proof. And he just could ride him. Oh, that's so like Justin. I've completed one challenge of Book buddy -a -thon, and that is to um, read a book with your buddy's favorite color on the cover. And so I have finished it. I love this. I gave it four stars. And for a romantic suspense novel, that's like a really good rating. You know how maybe with different kinds of books you give different ratings. So I really, really love this. And I just want to keep coming back to Phyllis Whitney's books uh, through the years. And I'm so happy that I read it. I need to leave a wrap up message for Brie. I did not call some of the stuff at the end. One thing that I love is that she's so good, Phyllis Whitney is at making atmosphere happen. And so you can tell from the cover, there's a giant topiary chess set um, at this estate, which is so over the top, but it really does make a really vivid picture of what this estate Athmore is like. And it, it's a little part of the plot, not a huge part, but woven in very nicely. And yes, I just really recommend Phyllis Whitney if you like Daphne du Maurier, if you like, um, who am I thinking, Mary Stewart, all of those. I have not had quite as productive a reading week as I was hoping. It is Wednesday night now. Um, and I really need to kick some butt with North and South. I have a lot to read. Uh, so I am halfway though. So I need to keep that in mind. It is you know, a, a little over 400 pages. So I am halfway, which is exciting. And I'm really, really enjoying it. I always worry about, you know, revisiting favorites. And this is my third time reading it, but it's just such a treat. It has been a kind of disorienting for a reading vlog kind of week and a half, but I made a promise to myself at the beginning of the month. And I mentioned it that even if it's disoriented, just put it together in a video and it could be a mishmash and still fun for people to watch who like watching reading vlogs, hopefully. Over, so the second week of June. Yeah, I'm like all <laughs> disoriented now. Then and that weekend we went to stay at my parents and it was really nice to socialize with adults. We hadn't done that in a long time. And then we came back. That whole time I was working very, um, vigorously to finish North and South in time for a book club. And I finished at like 545 on Sunday morning and book club was Sunday afternoon. I would have loved to film a clip of it, but I always feel kind of weird about asking people for their permission to film them. And then I don't want to film them without asking for that permission. So then I just always chicken out. But it was really fun. And there were several booktube people that were there because it takes place on Zoom now. And I've really just, I love North and South. I love North and South. Uh, so good. And then I came back and was obsessed with finishing the Korean drama series, Touch Your Heart. And I finished that this morning, which is Thursday, the 18th. Uh, so all of that to say that I'm back at home and I just feel like this reading year has been so weird with me constantly feeling divided between like 10 books. And I've tried to trim down my TBR, my currently reading, but I also feel I'm just very distracted with current events being what they are. And also with us transitioning, you know, my husband finding a job soon. I'm just constantly thinking about like, what will our life be soon? Uh, all of that. But I did uh, pick up a book a physical book. I've been having trouble focusing with physical books, but I did pick up the Blue Castle more. Carolyn and I were supposed to read aloud together on Monday, and then we ended up staying an extra day at my parents. So I said to Carolyn, why don't we just finish this independently? But I read several chapters and really enjoyed it. I'm around 100 pages in this one. And it starts out really, really sad. And then I forget how amazing it gets. Um, so then this is my buddy read challenge for Book buddy a -thon. But then also Carolyn and I were planning on reading Vision in White together. So I need to start that as well. I am in the midst. I decided that since I'm having trouble picking up physical books, the Book buddy a -thon challenge for um, read a book that your buddy rated five stars, I will be doing that 
uh, as the for the audiobook of the ABC murders. And then what was the other thing? Oh, with the chat, one of the book buddy thon like prompts, not a reading prompt, an activity prompt is to make a pub quiz for your friend. So Carolyn and I are going to do Victorian novel themed quizzes. And I think I'm going to do like a quote section and maybe a character, like just figure out what name the character is from. Carolyn and I didn't do our like video chat this past week, but we're going to do it. We're going to do one this next week. So we did miss one of the prompts, but that is okay. Just being away from home, it just really throws me off too with like all of my reading goals, all of that. Three videos edited and that's exciting because I just feel like I didn't really upload anything in May and I was trying to do more in June and then so just excited to have those. There's two videos I'm very excited to film but I can't do them until I read this certain book. All will be revealed in a little while. It will make sense but I need to read these other books before I read that book. But side note Hashtag not sponsored. Can we talk about the glories of seltzer water or sparkling water? I don't know what you call it where you're from, but I have found my two absolute favorite flavors. These are Wegmans sparkling water and the first is peach. It's so good. It has like kind of a slight bitterness to it. I can't explain it, but it's yummy, yummy, yummy. And then blackberry tangerine. This ironically does not taste like tangerine at all. I can only taste the blackberry, but the blackberry is so yummy that I don't care. Close third would be dragon fruit. And I'm trying to think if there's any others that I really liked from Wegmans. I think those are the ones that I've tried. I haven't tried the other ones. I think it'd be kind of fun to do a giant tasting and just like spread out all the seltzers. But yes, I adore it. It's such a nice treat into more of ABC murders and worked on my embroidery. There's one pink color that I'm lacking and I'm going to pick up at the store this weekend. So I just started on the greens, which are the stems and the leaves. Um, so it's coming along. This is the first quarter of it and hopefully I'll continue to make good progress. And then I decided just to watch a bit of TV before I go to bed. It's the show my dad told me about when, um, we, when uh, I was at my parents this weekend, and it's a show from the UK from the late 60s called The Prisoner, where a secret agent, it says, is abducted and taken to this kind of um, utopian village, and he's not allowed to leave. So I really enjoyed it, and I was so excited to find it on Prime. So Book buddy -a -thon has taken a turn for the better, and I finished two books since the last time I updated you. I finished The Blue Castle and as always revisiting a favorite. I have this fear it's not going to live up to it and I gave this five stars again. I loved it so much. There's just something so captivating about this book and it's a glorious, glorious book. I can't recommend it enough. It's just got such a special, unique story to it and is really, I mean, some of these Passages with nature writing seem reminiscent of other Ellen Montgomery books, but also it just seems unlike any other book that I've read, and I just adore it. Um, let's see when it was published, because I was going to call it a modern classic, and I think that would be correct. 1926. So yes. Oh my goodness. So this is getting close to, uh, it's closing in on 100 years old. Maybe if I have um, a booktube channel still um, in 2026, then I could read aloud The Blue Castle to everyone. But I did actually, um, on my walk yesterday, I took some fitted footage of the beautiful clouds. And so after this, you will see a, you'll get to hear some of the quotes that I loved from it with the beautiful clouds. I thought that would be a nice treat. And I have finished the ABC murders. It was excellent. I gave it four stars, which for a mystery means I really, really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, so I'm doing a little project with the ABC murders that you'll see a separate video for. Some quotes that I underlined from The Blue Castle by L.M. Montgomery. Sometimes of an afternoon, the two girls went into the barrens and looked at the wood flowers, but they did not pick any. 
Valency had read to Sissy the gospel thereof according to John Foster. It is a pity to gather wood flowers. They lose half their witchery away from the green and the flicker. The way to enjoy wood flowers is to track them down to their remote haunts, gloat over them, and then leave them with backward glances, taking with us only the beguiling memory of their grace and fragrance. Supper was the meal Valency liked best. The faint laughter of winds was always about them, and the colors of mistowis, imperial and spiritual, under the changing clouds, were something that cannot be expressed in mere words. Shadows, too. Clustering in the pines until a wind shook them out and pursued them over mistowis. They lay all day along the shores, threaded by ferns and wild blossoms. They stole around the headlands in the glow of the sunset, until twilight wove them all into one great web of dusk. Sometimes they took a lunch with them and went berrying, strawberries and blueberries. How pretty blueberries were, the dainty green of the unripe berries, the glossy pinks and scarlets of the half-ripes, the misty blue of the fully matured, and Valency learned the real flavor of the strawberry in its highest perfection. There was a certain sunlit dell on the banks of Mistowis, along which white birches grew on one side, and on the other still, changeless ranks of young spruces. There were long grasses at the roots of the birches, combed down by the winds and wet with morning dew late into the afternoons. Here they found berries that might have graced the banquets of Lucillus, great ambrosial sweetnesses hanging like rubies to long rosy stalks. They lifted them by the stalk and ate them from it, uncrushed and virgin, tasting each berry by itself with all its wild fragrance and sphered therein. When Valency carried any of these berries home, that elusive essence escaped, and they became nothing more than the common berries of the marketplace. Very kitchenly good indeed, but not as they would have been, eaten in their birch dell until their fingers were stained as pink as Aurora's eyelids. October, with a gorgeous pageant of color around Mistowis, into which Valency plunged her soul. Never had she imagined anything so splendid. A great tinted piece— Blue, wind-winnowed skies, sunlight sleeping in the glades of that fairyland, long, dreamy purple days paddling idly in their canoe along shores and up the rivers of crimson and gold, a sleepy red hunter's moon, enchanted tempests that stripped the leaves from the trees and heaped them along the shores, flying shadows of clouds. What had all the smug, opulent lands out front to compare with this? November, with uncanny witchery in its changed trees, with murky red sunsets flaming and smoky crimson behind the westering hills, with dear days when the austere woods were beautiful and gracious in a dignified serenity of folded hands and closed eyes, days full of a fine pale sunshine that sifted through the late leafless gold of the juniper trees and glimmered among the gray beeches, lighting up evergreen banks of moss and washing the colonnades of the pines, days with a high-sprung sky of flawless turquoise, Days when an exquisite melancholy seemed to hang over the landscape and dream about the lake. But days, too, of the wild blackness of great autumn storms, followed by dank, wet, streaming nights, when there was witch laughter in the pines and fitful moans among the mainland trees. It is Saturday afternoon, and I did the grocery shopping and then went to um, Joanne Fabrics, and I could not resist getting this little tote it has straps that look like measuring tape and it says so much fabric so little time i actually didn't have a bag to hold my embroidery project anyway and it is a really good it's a good size for it um, as soon as i came home i went ahead and like popped it in there um and i got i got a bunch of colors <laughs> so i'll just show you just all of these a whole handful a lot of um, ones in the red family and rust, um, and then a couple brown ones. But now I'm, I feel just kind of at ease because I really want to make a lot of headway on this embroidery project because, like I said, it needs to be ready by August 1st. Um, that's like framed and everything. So I would love it if I could finish. <sighs> Within one week would be amazing. Within two weeks, I would feel kind of okay about it um yeah because i want to get it framed and everything and i'll be really excited when it is 
then also, um, and now I also want to tell you about something else that I'm excited uh, that I ordered in the mail and got, and that is dandelion tea. So um, Dandy Blend is the kind that I got. I had it recommended from a subscriber, Leanne, if you're watching. Thank you for the recommendation. And um, this is ever since I got H. pylori, which is a stomach bacteria, a couple years ago. And I've dealt with it on and off, tested negative a while ago, and I still just have had constant heartburn. And coffee, you know, you saw in that reading blog, I had coffee. Well, then I had heartburn for two solid days. And I mean bad heartburn, because on normal days, I have heartburn anyway. So it's like heartburn on steroids. Um, and tea, since I didn't realize until a little while ago, it didn't occur to me, tea is acidic also. I always wondered, well, why does tea also give me heartburn? So dandelion tea, however, is alkaline. And um, I've heard it tastes like coffee. And I will show you when I opened it up and smelled it. It smells like coffee grounds. I was really, really shocked. Oh, I don't want to spill it out because this is kind of expensive. Um, yeah, so you can see it looks a lot like coffee grounds in there. It's just really brown. So it's not, as far as coffee goes, if you're way into coffee, it's not going to be the most amazing coffee that you've ever had. It tastes a little bit akin to um, instant coffee. But if you're someone like me, who isn't able to have any coffee, it's a great substitute. And I added a little bit of oat milk and some honey. That's real, yeah. So it's, it's coffee-ish and it's creamy and now it's sweet. And I think it's pretty, pretty satisfying. So I'm excited about it. And oh, I did though double the strength. So since it is a tea, I think you should just kind of go with their recommendation of their es espresso strength, which to me is just like a regular coffee. Yeah, so I definitely recommend it. If you aren't able to have coffee because of caffeine or um, autoimmune reasons, I know it makes people flare up, I definitely recommend it. 